Steve Stewart <laughs> in the house. <laughs> I am here, bro. What's up? Are you like a comedian kind of guy? Do you tell jokes and stuff? No, I'm so, so the opposite of a comedian. <laughs> An engineer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me too. I don't tell jokes. I let Barry tell the jokes. Right, Barry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Barry, did are you looking to have a career in comedy? No way. You crazy? I'm just asking, dude. You know what I'm saying? Do you think, uh, <laughs> do you think this is going to be a great session with uh, Steve Stewart? Oh, forget it. I'm telling you. That's all there is to it. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. Thank goodness I have a mute button because I had to clear my throat right in the middle of the intro. Isn't that great? Yeah, you ever do that, Steve? <laughs> I usually just edit that out. <laughs> That's true. I forgot you can edit. See, I'm so used to doing it as if it's live. I love it. Anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. This is session number, well, I'm not going to mention session numbers uh, because <laughs> because I recently had to reorder shows and I had to do some serious surgery to get rid of cert- to get rid of episode numbers and uh, episode session numbers. Anyway, so welcome to the podcast engineering show. I'm Chris Curran. I produce podcasts for the likes of E+, Dun & Bradstreet, Forbes, and every week on this show, we bring you podcast production techniques on a silver platter. We talk shop with podcast producers, engineers, and other specialists. We cover the audio engineering aspects of podcast production. It's not about the marketing or the listeners or the directories or Apple Podcasts or anything. It's all about the equipment and the workflow and the actual sound quality. Hey, there's a concept. Sound quality. Uh, All right, so I have a background in audio engineering in the music business, and since I entered podcasting five years ago, I noticed a huge lack of audio skills in podcasters and podcast producers. So that's why this show can help. That's why I created the Podcast Engineering School. And if you implement the best of what you learn here, your podcast will sound a lot better, and you'll spend less time producing them. Of course, Barry the Maintenance Guy is with me. It's not Barry White. Everybody, it's it's Barry the Maintenance Guy. He's a real guy that I knew in New Jersey. He's still there, probably. Barry, you ready to go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) He's always ready. Wow. And I got some additions to the website, too. And Oh, but I I always forget to mention the email newsletter that I started for Podcast Engineering School. So if you go to podcastengineeringschool.com, sign up for the email newsletter in the sidebar. And I send out one a month. And it's like, you know, some resources and announcements. It's, you know concise but it's good stuff and it's only once a month (laughs) i don't want to bother people right steve (laughs) yeah i mean once a month so steve stewart is here he's the owner operator at steve stewart podcast productions i know you do a a lot of editing and production you're the creator of the podcast editors club on facebook that's how i met you i um our buddy Mark Johansson said, hey, this guy, uh, Steve, ha- is ha- has this Facebook group called Podcast Editors Club, and uh, he's rocking it over there. And I was like, I edit I edit podcasts. Let me join. So it's a great group. Uh, you're also the organizer of the St. Louis Podcasters Meetup Group, which is awesome. The in-person grassroots podcaster groups are just are tremendous, right? How has your experience so far in St. Louis with that? You know, I wish we had a bigger turnout. Like I see some of the groups like Mark Deal has in Atlanta or you've got down there in uh, South Florida or out in Dallas. But, uh, you know, we we are definitely becoming the subject matter experts in the area. And we're helping a lot of people who are thinking about launching a podcast actually get their, you know, their feet wet. That's the big thing. People who don't know anything, they can come to these events and be like, so what is a podcast? And, and then you have guys like you and others who can actually, you know, hold them by the hand and explain everything. It's really good. And by the way, did you say my group in southern Florida? No, I'm saying the group. Oh, the group. I thought you said the my group's group. down. Oh, because I'm in uh, Colorado Springs. Did we meet at PodFest? No, I haven't been to PodFest yet. I'm planning to go next year if oh. my wife doesn't have a work thing. So cool. It sounds like that's the place to be when you're not at podcast movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're both really good in different ways and they're they're both we- very well done. Just, you know, yes. well done events. So, so we're going to start with the speed round. I don't know. 
you guys already know what that is. I'm going to tell Steve Stewart what it is right now. Steve, we want to know when you're about to record a podcast, we want to know your equipment you're using and the workflow and just kind of talk us through it, but do it really quick. Do it in like 30 seconds. And then as the show goes on, we're going to pick through it and actually, you know, uh, go deeper into each thing. But start with, you know, start with your microphone and where the signal flows and how you record it and all that. Sure. Uh, the majority of the podcasts that I've recorded in the past have always been an ATR 2100 microphone plugged USB directly into a MacBook Pro, unless I was recording it from home, which then it was ATR 2100 USB directly to a, uh, a Mac Mini. And that was really all the equipment I needed to get started. Okay, so then you record it how? Oh, okay, then uh, record straight to Audacity. You usually have a backup going through a digital recorder. Uh, I've got two digital recorders. I've got the old uh, Ederol, and I've got a Tascam. I forget the model number. Those are just a backup. And then uh, if I'm doing an interview over Skype or something, it's Ecamm Call Recorder. And I'll tell you what, that one just has never failed me yet. Okay. And I have to say now, I forgot to say a couple things in the intro. Number one, you offer quite a bit of training in Audacity, the program Audacity. You offer courses and webinars and stuff, and everybody can go to your website. For, what's your website again? Yeah, it's stevestewart.me. Yeah, stevestewart.me. It'll be in the show notes. So if, you, if you're if you into Audacity and you want to look at Steve's courses and webinars, go to stevestewart.me and um, check that out. And the reason, well, part of the reason Steve is on the show today is because in the Podcast Editors Club... That's the Facebook group. I saw you mention a couple really interesting little editing things you did. And it's 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 not your common editing techniques. And so I thought, you know what? This would be great on this session. <laughs> See, I remembered to uh, <laughs> to focus on editing and, you know, the philosophy, the workflow, the software. And I have a whole list of stuff we're going to talk about. But, you know, we're going in speed round right now. And, you know, you have a very simple setup, which is great because that, you know, there's less moving parts and less chance for yes. <laughs> problems. That's what I love about it. Right. And then, um, but then we're going to get into editing. So, all right. So you record it and then obviously you're doing all your editing and mixing in Audacity, right? Yeah. I've used Audacity since, I don't know, 2000, 2001. It was usually just to convert audio from vinyl onto CD through a computer and then when I started podcasting in 2010, it was just a no-brainer because I already knew the software. Right. And, and there, there's so much to be said for knowing the software. I mean, I still use SoundForge Pro, which I think I've been using since definitely 98, maybe even 97. And I, it's just like, you know, it's just the look and feel, you know it. And well, SoundForge Pro is just a little stereo editor, which I love just for cleaning yeah. stuff up. Um, but yeah, same with audacity for you. If that's what you use, that's what you know, you know, it's still ones and zeros. You're still cutting out parts and putting it together. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like a quality yeah. difference. Yeah. I have started using, uh, isotopes RX six, which does some fantastic things for massaging the quality of the audio, the D breath, the, uh, the D click, the mouth noise, those I use almost all the time. And it is really not only has it sped up my editing, but it has made things sound so much better. RX six, yeah, that's a that's a magical tool right there. All right, so and so when you when you're doing your editing in Audacity, that's where you add the musical elements of of episodes, and that's where you mix it all together, right? Right, right. All the uh, stuff that my clients send me because I don't really podcast anymore. It's it's my job, my position here as a podcast producer has taken over everything. So I'm producing shows for. I've got 18 different shows right now. And so what they send me is is all their components. And I just put them all together in the format that they want. But then we've been able to grow and do extra things that kind of enhance that listener experience with maybe a, you know, a little sound effect or a transition piece that, you know, Audacity does it all for me. So that's all I've ever needed. And it's it's become real I've become very efficient using it. Nice. And then and then you mix it out of Audacity and you do you master it after that, or do you just export it as an MP3 and that's your final MP3? Ah, good question. Yeah, usually I have been forever using the desktop version of iTunes to convert my MP3s because there are a couple of my clients who need them in different formats. For example, Spreaker will, if you don't put it into the right format, it will reconvert it again when you try to upload to the service. 
So I just use I just use iTunes, and that lets me, you know, switch the preferences to how I convert it. So I used to always do, at least for my podcast uh, alone, was 192 kilobytes mono. And it was just recently I finally relented because I could not, could no longer tell the difference between 128 mono and 192 mono. Now, as far as Spreaker, they want 128 stereo, but not joint, which is very strange, but apparently that works best for them. Really? Not joint? So how... Joint is... Yeah. Joint stereo is the standard, right? I thought so, but for whatever reason, if we try to upload to Spreaker as joint stereo, it converts it again. Whereas if it's not joint, then it just goes straight up and there's no extra conversion. Wow. And I try to avoid extra conversion whenever possible. I was going to say, as an engineer, that that's that's a deal breaker right there for me. I'm not... In fact, even when... Um, because SoundCloud used to do the same thing. Because I would, well, years ago, I know SoundCloud's having their problems now. And I've never used SoundCloud for podcasting. Well, I use, I throw some stuff up there now, but that's just like, you know, not, not a main directory or not a main distribution right. channel for this show. But in the past, when I put audio on SoundCloud, I, you know, they, even if you upload a WAV file, they convert it to MP3. So then I thought, ooh, I'll just upload an MP3 and then... It, they won't have to convert it wrong. They actually reconvert it, even if it's the same <laughs> bit depth and sample Ugh. rate. And it's like, and and I I went back and forth with their support for a while. I'm like, why are you reencoding it? They're like, no, we we reencode everything. And I'm like, yeah, but why? Like, I'm giving it to you. And they said, sorry, but we just reencode everything, and that just kills me. <laughs> Did it pull out ed the ID three tags and stuff? Or I'm oh, curious. This you know, is interesting. I don't know, but I would assume yes, because if you're re-encoding, it's, it's almost like a new file. I don't know if you yeah. can re-encode and keep the tags. Yeah, so, hmm. So they like told me, they told me, upload the highest resolution wave file you have to SoundCloud, and then let SoundCloud do the... Well, they're going to get a wave or an AIFF file yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, like a monster. Exactly. Like a mo and then they'll, they'll encode it. But, you know, I'd rather do that. So that's what I started doing, because I'd rather... In you know, encode it as an MP3 once instead of twice. Crazy. Yep. That's interesting about Spreaker. Yeah, that's... Uh, and, and I guess the average people don't even know that, right? They just upload it and right. call it a day. And you could you could thank Mark Deal for that, that tip because he's the one that showed me and taught me that. Okay. Mark Deal? Mark Deal's from Atlanta. He hosts the uh, podcast Atlanta's... Uh, Atlanta Podcasters Meetup Group, and he's very active in the space. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I don't know yeah. Mark. Have to get yeah, to if anybody happens to see a guy who looks kind of like Tim Ferriss walking around at podcast movement, that is Mark Deal. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, by the way, we're recording this before podcast movement, but this is going to air afterwards. So that's why I didn't get into talking that, um, Steve, you're going to be running the whole podcast pavilion and I'm going to be running the whole microphone test drive booth. So we're both going to be yes. really busy at podcast movement. A lot, a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of work, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right, so then, all right, so cool. Then you, that, that's how you upload it. And, you know, you, you convert it through iTunes and you tag it through iTunes. All right, so let's get into editing because... Good, because I thought that was a speed run. We've been talking for like seven minutes. I know, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a disciplined host. <laughs> I always thought of getting a timer, like a tick tock tick. Yeah, like, I was just thinking about that. And then it ends and you're watch. like, you're done, shut up. <laughs> can't do that Barry what am I going to need to really get the speed round done right and really enforce this you know 60 30 seconds or 60 second rule what am I going to need you're going to need a couple of horses or a couple of mules <laughs> really what oh you know what I last night I listened to the, the my raw recordings of Barry and I actually heard the context of that again. I was reminded of the context of that statement because <laughs> everyone always asks me, what the heck was Barry talking about? What are you going to need two couple of horses or a couple of mules? And <laughs> so I heard you get it a little time. worried there, Chris. You're talking about <laughs> listening to some old recordings of Barry, <laughs> right? And I got a couple, I got a couple of the clips I really wanted. I, I didn't get to process them or put them into my, to my sound clip app yet, but I got a couple of them that are awesome. He's like, Wow, like like if, if if you hear something ridiculous, like someone's doing something ridiculous, and he's just like, wow. 
<laughs> Honey, what do you want to do tonight? Oh, I don't know. You want to watch some TV? No, I want to go listen to Barry. <laughs> I was looking for that. I was looking for that specific clip. Wow. <laughs> oh, wait till you guys hear it. It's going to be awesome. F- future sessions. Tune in. All right. So let's get to editing. I saw you posted in the Podcast Editors Club on Facebook, which, by the way, if you're listening to this and you're not a member, go sign up. Sign up for Mark Johansson's group, too, yeah. as my voice cracks. All right, so here's the thing. You posted something on that Facebook group, your Facebook group, that said you had a client who, when they were saying the URL for a website on the show, they said WW, and they only said two Ws. Yeah. And so, so tell us that story. Yeah, I had a client who had a guest on, and at the end, of course, you always say, hey, how can we find out more about your... It was a fintech product, so they said, how do you find out about it? And she said, yeah, go to www. And that just didn't sit right with me. So I thought, okay, we'll just cut out the www because that's so unnecessary these days. Right. But when I did that, it just didn't feel right. <laughs> so I thought, okay, what can I do here to make it sound right? And I was trying to think about fade in, fade outs, uh, you know, and I thought, well, why don't I just make another W? So I copied the first W and put it at the end. It didn't work. I copied the first W, put it at the beginning. It didn't work. To, you know, copied the second W, copy, you know, pasted it. It didn't work anywhere. So what I ended up doing was, okay, the W's have to sound a little bit different. Otherwise, it sounds like, you know, it was just a copy-paste edit, right? right? I took the first part of the W, because there's two syllables in, du- well, three in W, right? Right. Took the first syllable, syllable out, copied that, pasted it in the third, you know, where the third one would go, and then copied the last two syllables of the second W, and made a whole new W yes. <laughs> out of the first two. So it was WW, but then the third W came in and it sounded it sounded perfect. You would have never known. It was amazing. That's a great story. Now, when you put, so you took the first half of one W and the second half of another W and put them together. When you put them together to create that third W, um, I know sometimes when you put stuff together, it, there's, there'll be like a little click in the middle because somehow it doesn't line up. How do you make it line up and be seamless? Oh, well, with Audacity, and this was taught to me by a guy who, I was doing a webinar with a guy who's talking about how you use Audacity to create audiobooks. He showed me a tip that I didn't know existed in there. If you go into Audacity and you go into, oh gosh, I created a shortcut for it, so I don't even remember where it is. It (laughs) is under, uh, I've got to find it because you got to know where this is. It's (laughs) under the edit menu. And it's called Find Zero Crossings. And what Find Zero Crossings does is when you find, when you select something with your cursor, an area of audio, could be anywhere from, you know, a tenth of a second long to to two minutes long, whatever you want it to be. When you hit that Find Zero Crossings effect or that, that command, then it changes the range that you selected to where the beginning and the end of where you're going to cut matches up perfectly. So if you deleted it, it would line up at the zero line. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but it then transitions really well to where you won't you won't notice the bump. You won't hear the click, the pop. You won't hear it bump there. So find zero crossings has been, it's become one of those commands that I use every single time I do an edit. And when you use a keyboard shortcut, I just use Z. It just, you know, hit the letter Z and then do your cut, do your delete, do your copy paste, whatever you're going to do. It makes that edit so much smoother than the old days of just, I think I've got it. Right. It didn't work. Let me try again. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. The zero line is, is just the line in the middle. And then, you know, you have the wave, you know, the wave goes above the zero, then it goes below the zero and it, you know, the wave does its dance around, you know, up and down and the zero line is right in the middle. And so that's why when you cut on the zero line, the beginning of the cut and the end of the cut are both at zero. So then when you delete the part in the middle and then it gets put together, it, they both, they meet right at zero. And then it's like, so it's, it's seamless. That's awesome. Yeah. I equate it to that tile in the bathroom that's sticking up out of the floor a little bit too much. That's the problem. If you can get it to where it's even with the rest of the floor, well, it's seamless. It's perfect. And that's what Find Zero Crossings does. Right. You also mentioned fade ins and fade outs. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you uh, use them a lot in editing. How yes. do you use them? Yes. Well, most of the time I'm using that to fix a, when somebody starts a word with the letter um. <laughs> <laughs> the letter um, I love that. Yep. So if you've got an um, 
or something where you just had to cut it close to another word, sometimes you're, again, you're hitting that, that bump if you cut it. But if you do a fade in, uh, I'm trying to think of a really good example. I should have thought this before we recorded. But yeah, if it's and um, and you want to cut out a piece of it, you can either fade out at the end or fade in at the beginning of the word to make it sound more natural. Because then it's not this sudden jump into the, the next word that sounds unnatural. But if you've got it to where it kind of, and, and when I say fade in, I'm talking about a tenth of a second or two tenths of a second is all you need. And it ramps up the word and it sounds more natural. Right. So instead of like a hard cut, you, you make the hard cut, but then you, for like the next tenth of a second, you fade it in. So it kind of like smoothing, smoothens that hard edge. Exactly. And it's worked so many times. It's just, again, I've got a keyboard shortcut to make it quick and easy that sometimes you don't even think about it. You just do it. Right. So I find that if someone says, um, Barry, um, Barry, right? So, um, Mm -hmm. let's say you want to delete the, um, and you want to keep the Barry. So, um, Barry. So sometimes if you cut right on the B of Barry, it might come in. Well, maybe that's a bad, bad example. It is. Let me give you a better one. I've got a guy who starts his sentences with a, so a, so, well, the, so is almost good enough to just cut the, uh, part out of Hmm. and start with the, so, but the, when people say the word so, you can hear it when I say so, it kind of, it, it comes in. It's it not ramps so, up smoothly. Yeah. Like P is is sudden, pop, pop, pop. Right. But so has this ramp up. Well, if I cut a so, I cut the a uh part of out of it, and then I just start with so, and it's like immediate. Well, I've got to fade that in so that it comes in easily like that. Right, because if you don't fade it in slightly, and I, I do this too, if you don't fade it in slightly, the S will hit, it hits too hard, and it's clearly unnatural. Mm-hmm. It, that's when you can hear the cut. <laughs> and for anybody who's trying to do that in Audacity, I would not do the envelope tool for that. I would use fade in command. And again, keyboard shortcuts are your friend. So I would just create the keyboard shortcut of I for fade in or something like that and just... It's easier to use I on your, you know, if you got your left hand on your keyboard, you can jump over to I fairly quickly and keep your right hand on the mouse. Right. So the other thing that you mentioned was and um, and dumb. So this is, <laughs> but um, and um, when, when people <laughs> put the um on the end, those I find mostly, I don't even really mess with those anymore. I don't even try to take out the um because You know, obviously you can, you can pretty much do anything, but I'm not going to sit there for an hour and a half on one little word cutting out Mm -hmm. an um, but those are much harder because let's say and um, so the D on the and is slurred with the um, and again, Mm -hmm. if you, even if you cut out the um, it'll be like, and, and and Mm -hmm. even you can even fade, you can fade out of that D of the and. But even that, it's it, it to me it it's hard to get that to sound natural. Is that your experience? Yeah, and what I have found though is with and a lot of the times you can cut out those and it actually makes the conversation sound better. When you've got somebody who is telling their story, they they go on and on and they tie the entire storyline together with the letter and. and it's like a, <laughs> the letter. It's and. like a kid. Yeah, the letter and. <laughs> so I did this and this da, and da 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 and da 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 and okay, let's cut out some of the <laughs> ands because it's getting repetitive. <laughs> and you'll see that that helps that helps the conversation along. So if you've got an and um that you just it's just sitting there and it's annoying you and you're the editor, take it out and see how that sounds. You can always put it back by control Z or whatever your undo control is on your DAW. Just take out the and um and see what happens. Right. So when you talk about, let, let's go in this direction now. So you just mm-hmm. mentioned taking out the whole and um, like not trying to get rid of the um part and keeping the and. You're saying, try getting rid of the whole thing and then the person will stop one sentence and then they'll start another and the, the and um will be missing. When you take it out and you're listening back to it, what are you actually listening for? Just to make sure it sounds natural. If it sounds like the person is speaking naturally, then everything is fine. Sometimes you have to adjust the pacing, which means you uh, you increase the gap between the two. I guess, I guess you call it sentences now because you've, you've taken the and out. 
you just adjust the pacing times uh, sometimes and that helps as well. Right. So that natural feeling is important. Do you think everyone listening knows what that means? Do you think, I mean, because Gosh, I'm wondering. No, I would. Yeah. Well, if I'm listening to a podcast and it doesn't sound natural, then it was a bad edit. And I am not going to let a bad edit get through if I can help it. So you're going, every time I do an edit, I back up at a second or two and I'll listen to it to make sure that it worked the way I wanted it to. And if you, you can just, you, you should be able to tell that it worked or not. And if it didn't, try something else. And there are times, though, that you just cannot fix it and you just have to let it go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. I have one guy who I uh, just edited the uh, the piece. And this guy is, he's habitual for starting each sentence with the same word twice. There will be a lot of ums in the middle. But then he'll he'll kind of vary off to another piece of a sentence so he doesn't finish the first one or the second one. He'll get to the third one. But you can't start with the third one because it's part of the first one. But you can't cut out the second one because it just doesn't, you know, so you have to leave it in. Right. And unfortunately, that's what you have to do. Right. And that's that's his style. That's his flow. And, you know, yeah. it's not and like it's you can a, clip out every word and reorder the words and make a sentence yet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Although they have that thing find- now where apparently... Like they're doing the Photoshop for audio where you can, there's some programs, I think it's artificial intelligence programs or something where you can talk, it's like you give like maybe two or three minutes or maybe like 10 minutes sample of your voice. So you got to talk for like 10 minutes and then the computer gets to know your, the words and the tone and everything. And then you can literally type in a sentence in the computer like, hello, Steve Stewart. Like, I, I'll type that, hello, Steve Stewart, and then the computer will say, hello, Steve Stewart, in my voice, exactly my voice and my intonation, everything. That's crazy. Wow, I can't wait for that. We're going to have some great prank calls. <laughs> so then, well, but there's always, <laughs> in, the intonation can never be natural, though. That's the thing. <laughs> okay. I mean, no, think about it. Uh, they, yet, a so computer can, yeah. <laughs> Someday. A computer. Well, a computer can string together words, but the inflection, I mean, I, I, I mean, is a computer ever going to be able to do this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, we've got text to speech now. Who would have ever thunk it? I know. You're right. You're right. All right. So, so take when you take out, when you make an edit and you take something out, you got to step back a few seconds and listen to it. Make sure it sounds natural. That's good. Now, when you're you mentioned adjusting the pacing now when you're adjusting the pacing which is the space between two sentences let's say when do you adjust it and and what are you careful about when you're doing that well i'm trying things out with that edit that i just made i can't leave a sentence until i've i've finished you know making sure that it sounds natural so it's going to be done immediately Sometimes I'm just copying more of the, I don't want to say silence because there's, there shouldn't be any silence. There's going to be some kind of white noise in the background. Sometimes it's actually a breath. Uh, I've, I've edited sentence, you know, maybe you edit a piece of a sentence out and you've got to have some kind of a gap between there. Copy and pasting a breath from somewhere else in the project often will help you to get through that because then it sounds like they're making their conversation and then they're breathing like a natural person or something like that, you know. So there's there's all kinds of, of trip, you know, tips you can do there. White noise and breath seems to be the more common solution for me. Yeah, and I've experienced that. That's a very common mistake for beginning editors is they'll, if they want to, let's say there's a four second gap between two sentences and they want to cut that down to two seconds, they'll literally cut out half of a breath. <laughs> so someone ah. will be like... <gasps> It'll, you know, it'll be a weird breath. And, and so I think focusing on the breaths is, it, well, it's vital to, for, to, for it to sound natural. Yeah. And if you're copying a breath that happened just like a second or two before in a different sentence, what I've done to change that is to change the amplification of it. And usually I'm reducing that sound of the breath. So it's there, but you don't notice it. And it doesn't sound exactly like the one you just heard. <laughs> I know right. it's it's kind of weird, but it makes it sound more more human, more natural. Yeah, and and when you bring down the level of that breath, that helps too because it's there, but it's it it's it almost becomes subconsciously natural. Like you're not 
hearing it very loud, but it's there and you feel it. The, the listener feels it and then it just becomes natural. One thing I noticed, and I'm sure you notice it too, is that there's so many different kinds of breaths. There's there's the really slow breath. So, and then there's the, uh, so, <laughs> like there's a quick <laughs> breath and a short breath. And like the quick breath, usually when someone does a quick breath, a, a, like a deeper quick breath in, they're going to give some serious energy when they start talking. Yes. And then when they do a slow breath, when they start talking, it's more relaxed. So you got to cu- <laughs> choose your breaths wisely. Right, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. And a breath you can think of as, as being another piece of the cadence of a sentence. If somebody's excited and they're jumping around like you are, then you need a quick little short breath. But if it's a thoughtful piece where they're, you know, it's, it's a dramatic piece of the story, then a longer breath, if you need it, is what you would use. Got it. All right. Well, let's step back. Let's step back to the philosophy of editing. I think you've mentioned quite a number of, well, you've mentioned quite a bit of your philosophy in terms of sounding natural and, and the pacing and stuff like that. Um, do you get much into content edits? So I've had clients before who were like, oh, well, you know, the show's an hour and five minutes. If if you hear any anything that you just, it doesn't belong, yeah, just go ahead and cut it out. And of course, I never do that because I'm not, I'm not, as an editor, I'm not making content decisions. I, I'm very mm-hmm. clear with my clients on that. Do you make content decisions like that? If it is, it's a very small piece. It's not even really going to take out an entire conversation or you know segment of a conversation. It's going to be maybe they talked for a minute or two about the weather. And that usually I would get some kind of, if not... If it's not a pre-approved agreement with my client that I'd be able to do something like that, then I'll let, you know shoot them a note saying, hey, just let you know, I cut this out. If you want to put back in, I can put it back in. I know exactly where to throw it back in there. But yeah, there's really no content editing, um, except for one or two of my clients where they're like, you know, we, we don't want any political things. If you hear about that, let us know. And I usually just cut it out and say, I took this out. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I meant to tell you about that, Steve, but I forgot. <laughs> Okay, and I forgot to ask you before, when do you do the editing in your workflow? Like you you get the recorded files from your clients and mm-hmm. for those of you listening, it's would it's the same thing if you you're hosting a show and you record your own show and a guest, you end up in audacity with several different files of different speakers. Mm-hmm. Do you apply like do you process the audio first like with, you know, EQ and compression, make it sound good or use noise reduction? Do you process the audio first and then do the edits, or do you do it the other way around? Uh, there's so many different variables here. Chris, I don't know where to start. Let's <laughs> start with... We got time. <laughs> uh, well, a good majority of my clients send me a .mov file because they did an interview over Call Recorder, and that's the best way to record and get me one file, original source. There's been no production on it yet. They just give me the original raw recording that way. So what I will do... And the uh, host is on the left and the guest is on the right type thing? Yeah, well, most of the time. Okay. Yes, Yeah. we'll go with that. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> we'll go with that. No, it usually is. So what I'll have to do is bring it into Audacity and I can split the tracks in the track control panel. If anybody wants to know what that is, the track control panel is the bar on the left of the WAV file. That's where you have a little slider bar for panning, for uh, gain, but there's a little triangle at the top of that box that you can get a drop down menu from. And down there it says split stereo to mono. And I just work in mono because A, the, the, the production is going to get into mono at the end anyway. And B, it gives me more room on my screen to work with other things. You know, stereo track is obviously double that space and just makes it easier for me to see everything. So I'll split that to mono. Then I'll export it out and convert that, or uh, I'm sorry, I'll level it with Levelator because I haven't yet graduated to using Auphonic for everything (laughs) that sounds like everybody else is using. I've just been using Levelator for years and it's never failed me. Then I'll bring the projects back in because I've got the guest leveled and then I've got the, uh, the host leveled, bring them back in and that's where I start to do noise reduction uh, start to do the edits, and uh, what is the other stuff? Oh, if um, if I've got any kind of um, mouth clicks, what's wonderful about Isotopes RX6 is 
it is a standalone piece of software that does more than what it can do as a plugin through Audacity. But I can I can do the mouth clicks. Uh, you know, it takes all those little mouth noises, and I'm, I've got them here in my voice now. People are probably noticing them unless you've run it through some kind of processing, Chris. But there's mouth clicks that drive me crazy, so I run that process to get rid of some of that stuff. Uh, and you the, run you run the D mouth clicker in Audacity as a plugin. Yeah, yeah. If you can add it as a plugin through Audacity, then it just shows up under the effects menu. It's wonderful. Now, the D breath is not something that can be used as a plugin in Audacity, so I might have to also do that before I bring everything back into Audacity. I can run it through Isotopes RX6, do the breath control. I do have one or two clients where I have to do that first just because it is so, you know, they're right up on the mic and they're breathing, and it really, in a matter of seconds, it dampens that breath, and you can adjust that to whatever depth you want or volume, I guess you'd say, you want in just a matter of seconds. So that has saved me a lot of time rather than selecting the breath, hitting amplify, dropping it down to like a negative 30, negative 35 decibels or whatever. It just has made that process so much easier because it's just like three, four seconds, and I've got a 30-minute interview. The, the breath is taken care of for me. Nice. So when, you, when you're starting your session in Audacity, you would for the for the couple clients that you use the RX six D breath. You you do that first. Yeah, yeah, and I already know that I'm going to have the host of this show is I'm is you know he's going to need it, so I just do that first before I start to do the noise reduction, the leveling, uh, and a lot of that can be done. Uh, well, again, the process was leveling, and and my. And a lot of people are probably listening to this going, Steve, you're doing a lot of extra work. And I know I am to use Levelator because Levelator only accepts WAVE and AIFF files where if I get a MP3 or an MOV file, you know, maybe I could be doing some of that in something else without having to, to convert it to WAVE first. Right. So you le use Levelator on each track separately. I do because I find that if I've got, you know, if I take the whole conversation and level it, Skype does a lot of good things as far as they it amplifies the guest a lot of the time and the host might not have had their mic settings up high enough. So if they start talking at the same time, you'll never hear the host because the guest is already loud enough and when you level them together, it's not going to amplify it very well. It does a pretty good job, but I just decide to go ahead and do it separately because that gives me more control. Mm. You know, one thing, because um, I use Reaper, for my multi-track DAW. Mm -hmm. And one thing in Reaper, there's, I just, I think I talked about it on a previous session, but there's a like a plugins, a free, pl not a plugin, it's extensions, that's it. Extensions for Reaper, which you can, you know, install and it's free. One and, and it has a lot of different functionality. One of them is loudness. And now I can either choose a, a whole track or I could choose individual audio clips and I nice. can actually level it to a certain loudness um, very easily. So without nice. converting it, without, you know, just right in Reaper. I'm wondering if Audacity might have something similar to that. Well, it does have normalize and things like that, compression. And you can select segments of it to run those processes. Yeah, so, so it's possible like you could that. choose the the track, let's say the host's clip, the 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 big yeah. the one clip of the host voice and normalize it to whatever minus nineteen luffs or something right but here's the thing I can do all of that with Levelator in about a minute's time whereas if I was selecting sections you know it depends on how long the interview is but you know just running it through a process plus I'm giving myself another copy just in case I've got a you know if, if I export out as wave from the original MOV file I've got a copy of it in wave and then i go through and do some other work now i've got another copy of it in audacity so i've actually got three copies the original raw the exported wave and then i've got the edited version and if anything ever happened you know i've got two or three different backups to to go to i love that i love backups and because that's one thing i've heard about audacity is that the edits are destructive right right which I mean, same thing with SoundForge Pro. I mean, if I make an edit and I click and I save it, I can't undo it. It's just, mm -hmm. that's it. So obviously you have to 
make a cop, you know, keep the original file and then make a copy of it and then edit that file. That's your edited file. And then, you know, mm -hmm. just keep every step of the way you keep a copy. <laughs> so if you need to step back one, one step, you can. <laughs> so, yeah, I haven't found a problem with audacity as far as this destructive editing thing. I do know there are people out there who need a non-destructive editor, but I haven't found a use case for it for me. I, just because I don't know where it would be, where if I've done something, I can't go back and fix it somehow. It's I know I can't undo it if I've saved it or exported it, but it's so rare that I would need to do that, that I would spend the time on that one occasion a year or two a year to actually go to the original source and find it and then you know copy paste it back in. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think, and most of the complaints I've heard about Audacity are people who they didn't know that the editing was destructive and then they got into it and then they couldn't find their original file anymore. And it's like, oops. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just had somebody post in the group the other day, Mark Bologna from New Orleans. He has the Beyond Bourbon Street podcast. Look at you with was, the shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great guy, man. I met him at, the fir at uh, his first podcast movement back in Fort Worth. We sat down and talked for a long time. He's a great guy. Got a lot in common nice. with him. And uh, he, it was before he launched the show, and he was trying to figure out what show to launch. And we were talking about it. And I really didn't think he was going to do the New Orleans one, but he did. It was great. But we were, he uh, posted on the group that, that uh, he had done like four or five hours of editing on a show he needed to get out that night. Oh. But I guess he was doing it in a office building or hospital. It was away from his, his normal setup. He was doing it on the laptop. And he didn't save it. And it crashed on him because his hard drive was full. Oh, yeah. So a problem there. Hard drive's full. I mean, you you really can't get around that too easily. But then he wasn't saving the project along the way. Oh, and so he said he lost a whole bunch of work, and it sucks. It sucks. Yeah, that's that's rough. That's that uh, and that that'll happen once in your life, and it'll never happen again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. He'll never do that again. Trust me. You know it. <laughs> yep. Kind of like forgetting to hit the record button. <laughs> Well, actually, that's happened to me, well, twice. <laughs> is it because you switched things, you know, tools or, or equipment? No, the reason was, is this was back in New... One of the, the most, the funniest time was when I was back in New Jersey and I was... Ho I, I'm, I have, you know, I have this round table where I have all my equipment and I have other people sitting around the table and I got boom arms to, you know, for three other people. So I had this studio and I had, I was doing a show and hosting a show so I was engineering the show live, like literally like playing sound effects, fading faders. We were streaming live over the internet. I was a host of the show. So I'm the one who's coming in. Hey, and I'm the one introducing guests and we're doing it all as if it's live, like it's on radio because it was, we were streaming it online. And so what happens was I would just, I mean, I have to do a million things, right? I mean, mm -hmm. literally. And, and the stuff I'm doing is like an average person just can't even imagine what I'm doing. You, you know, you know, so doing so much, I just was like, okay, are we ready? Okay. Got the, I, you know, I'm connecting with the guest on Skype. I'm doing this and, and it's like, okay, are we ready? And, you know, and then I just forgot to hit record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now see, that was a different setup for you. It wasn't your normal setup. No, I, I did that every, every week. We did that for a oh, year and a half every, every week. week. Yeah. Oh. So then, yeah, what was your problem, man? I know. I just, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, forgot to hit record. But it was funny because actually that episode was Social Media Unscrambled. That was the show, uh, which we don't do anymore, but all the episodes are still up there. I forget which. Well, Dino Dogan was in studio and someone else was too. And we went for about five minutes and I realized, oh my God, we're not recording. <laughs> and... You know, I had the option then. Well, you really don't have an option. For, first thing that went through my mind was, let me just hit record now and I won't say anything to anyone. And then I'm like, yeah, but that's stupid because when it comes time to put out the podcast, I'm, you know, what, are we going to not have the first five minutes of the podcast? That's stupid. Mm -hmm. Can you so, recreate that somehow? No, Probably no. Not. So I stopped everybody. <laughs> I said, okay, hold on, hold on. I didn't hit record. And they're like, what? But the great thing is, is we, we literally, you know, started again. We had to start again from the beginning, and Dino just was killing me the whole time that, ooh, let's try to, you know, emote genuinely again, and like, on the air, they're killing me <laughs> that I didn't hit record, but and, but it was really funny, so it, it actually ended up being funnier than the normal thing, <laughs> so, which is weird. 
Anyway, maybe I should post a link to that episode. There you go. So it was uh, social media unscrambled, and you don't do that anymore because you unscrambled it? Dude! <laughs> no. Successfully unscrambled social media. I love it. You, you know, no, it was a great... Tr- this was like the <laughs> greatest show I was ever part of with David Deutsch, my co-host, and we talked about social media, and, and he's, he's great with social media, but it just... Like we never figured out how to monetize it, and then you know, and then I moved to Colorado Springs, and David Deutsch is still in New Jersey. So, you know, I mean, we'd love to do it. We were trying to find a third partner, like someone who could do the production and do some of the work, so that me and David could just be idiots, and someone else could do the production, um, and then we could build build it up and maybe sell courses. I don't know what we could do, but we never actually figured it out. So, so what you're saying is social media is still scrambled. It is. It's still scrambled. You know. Uh. I was hoping that there was a solution out there because I can't figure out the Snapchat thing. Oh, really? <laughs> no, don't bother. Don't bother. Yeah. Just use Instagram. <laughs> um, all right. So I want to ask you about off mic stuff. You know, we talked about the breaths. Okay. Some people's breaths are, you know, some people, if they're really close to the mic and the the problem is, and, and it's hard, I, I have to teach clients this as well. It's hard to teach them that when you're talking, get right on top of the mic and talk. And when you're not talking, just lean back like six inches because like could you hear me breathing yeah yeah. (laughs) like i'm right on the mic it's like if i'm talking i could be on the mic now now i'll breathe the same way but i'll 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 lean back just just six inches i'll tell you one of the things i do coach you couldn't even hear clients to do is have them to record split tracks so that if that ever does happen that i can silence it out but it's always nice to have that white noise be constant because if you take it away, it's kind of noticeable, even if they're not speaking. So that solution is usually there for me when they record split track. But I, I have some clients who it's one file. And, you know, if you got one person who's sitting on that, you know, especially the guests, they maybe don't know. Right. They're sitting on their mic or, or whatever they're using as their microphone or worse yet you got somebody who's not using a microphone <laughs> and you've got all that noise in the background. Oh, it just kills me. Right. So, so, yeah, when when tracks are combined, that's rough. That's why, you know, well, one of the things I say, I think it's in the first class of the podcast engineering school, is that if you're a professional engineer, you never, you always, I should say, you always record everything multi-track everything has its own track period now there are except there are weird exceptions when you have to record some things together but that should be the weird very rare exception um and not the rule because when things are combined you you can only do so much yeah yeah so all right the hard way too yeah all right so you have people breathing on the mic you got to take care of actually i have a client who when he ends a sentence he'll be like He'll, you know, he'll talk and he'll end a sentence and then like, like right after the sentence, mm-hmm. he'll take a, like, he'll be right on the mic and he'll just take a deep breath in. And it's like, then, it, then I have to, <laughs> usually I have to put a cut point right between when he ended his last word and, and right before the breath. And then I'll have to just like, cause if I, if I just delete that breath, it, then it sounds very abrupt. Like he'll stop talking and then it just goes to silence very weird so what i have to do with that breath is that's when i bump it down like you know 10 or 12 db like so it's still there but it's it's just less and it's not as (laughs) you know it doesn't feel like (laughs) yeah breathing is normal we all breathe there's going to be a breath you just don't notice it i mean if you've got a gate running then it might cut out everything before you speak and up until you finish speaking but other than that you shouldn't have dead silence i don't think right uh, because you're going to have it, it, white noise is your friend in that situation. But the breaths you have a problem with are the ones that become obnoxious. When when breaths become part of the content, you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. And by white noise, just to clarify for everyone, you're meaning just regular the room noise, the regular room yeah. noise in the background. Yeah. I mean, we're not NPR. We don't have sound booths in every house. Of, you know, everybody has a basement with, you know, soundproofing on the walls. You don't normally get that type of a situation and it's perfectly acceptable in podcasting to have some white noise because it makes it sound more authentic to me otherwise you're listening to an audiobook or a highly produced radio show which is great but it's not expected in the podcasting space at least that's my opinion right right 
So I have a question on behalf of Jason DeFilippo and uh, Mark Johansson. Do you have any clients who use a Blue Yeti? Gosh, I don't think so. Wow! I have to find out. <laughs> uh, the, hey, if you don't know, then then probably no. So it's good. We're talking yeah. about the breaths and stuff. And I just wanted to ask you about noises in between speaking. So some people, you know, they'll be talking on the podcast and then, then it's okay. And then when they stop talking, they're they're doing this. What do you do with all that noise? <laughs> don't you mean... That type of thing. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes. You got to take notes. While oh, yes. Typing. Speaking. Yeah. Or the bump in the mic. Yeah. That, that's a good one. Which is exactly why you need split tracks. So you can silence or cut that crap out. Right. Cut the crap. I mean, everything I do. Well, no, I can't say that. I do more cutting the crap than massaging the audio quality. So when I've got something I present to the client, it sounds like a conversation. And nobody knows that there was a dog barking or I've got one client for some reason recently. <laughs> she has been clanking. I don't know if she had cereal and she <laughs> clanked the spoon in the bowl, but cereal. she'll stop talking. And then like a minute later, you hear this clink. And it sounds like a, you know, a fork and a plate. And I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> She's Your cutting a been steak. Speaking. <laughs> and all I have to do is silence it out. It's gone. Nobody ever knows except me. And I've got to ask her what that is. But <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. All right, don't chew gum. Don't you know eat mints while you're on a podcast? Wow. <laughs> you see, I need the Barry clip. Wow. All right, let's talk about keyboard shortcuts real quick. Oh yes, you mentioned a lot of them. What else, what other nice. shortcuts do you use all the time? Well, everything I've got is a shortcut if I can. Do you want me to go through them all? Yeah, dude. Okay. Almost every shortcut is oh, on my left hand. Wait, were you asking me or Barry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Barry said yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So the, I'll just go through the most common ones. Okay. So I have the letter Q set up to export the selected audio. So there might be a... Um, when Clamor was around, I would select, you know, 20, 24 seconds of a piece of conversation and export it. And all I had to do was hit the letter Q, exported it out as a file, and then I can mess with it later. W uh, is now my playback speed. In Audacity, there is the transcription tool, and the transcription tool will allow you to play back the, well, when you hit play, it plays it back faster, but there you can't do it with your space bar. Space bar is just play, unless you change that. So W now has become my transcription toolbar, I don't know what you call it, start button, and so I'll have my start, you know, the playback starting at like 1.25 or 1.33 speed when I know that I don't have anything to edit and just looking for stuff, right? Got it. E and T, since they're at the top of the row, and I can't really find good reasons for using them, those are my zoom in and zoom out. It's just right there, fingers. Interesting. R, I, yeah. And E and T stand for extraterrestrial also. <laughs> e is for expand, T is for titan. T-I-G-H-T-E-N, not T-I-T-A-N like, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Titan. <laughs> and then R is repeat. I just have it repeat the last effect. So I use that a lot because if I've been going through and, you know, using the amplification or something like that, just R is very quick and easy. Wait, and so if you apply down. amplification to a small clip, let's say you bump it down 5 dB mm -hmm. and you listen back and you say, oh, it sounds okay, but I could drop it down another 5. You literally just hit the letter R and it drops it down another 5. Really, the, the, the case where I would use it is I've got somebody who's talking fast, and my deep breath in Isotope RX-6 didn't catch it. So they've got two or three breaths in a sentence or two, you know, or, or a minute or two that didn't catch it. So I will have the amplification to a negative 30, 35 decibels. And then when the next one comes up, I select that and just hit R. Okay. And then I hit the next one. You know, oh, there's another one. Okay, just hit R. So if I know that the last command that I used was amplify down, right? then I can just use it again. There's some other reasons for, for using R uh, to repeat, but R for repeat it just makes it easy. Nice. All right, we got to move on. This is getting boring, isn't it? Is it? I don't think <laughs> But no, so. second row. Well, I'm on the second row. This is all just the second okay. row. A is my shortcut for amplification. Okay. S, I've changed that to be the uh, shortcut for, uh, for silence. D is delete, always. Hmm. F is for fade out. 
And then I've got down the bottom row, Z is my zero, find zero crossings. X, I forget what I use X for. <laughs> okay. Uh, C is for, gosh, what is C for? I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, I can well, normally X and C are like, you know, control X is cut, control C is copy. But Oh, X is for auto duck just because I couldn't use A or D. It's already used for something else. Uh, but I don't use that much anymore. C is no longer assigned to anything, so I could use that for something else. And uh, let's see what other ones. Uh, B is for bass and treble. N is for noise reduction. Wait, bass and treble. What is that? What is that? Yeah, if I've got something where it just it needs to be boosted in some way. Uh, for example, I've got one client who they have a a fake announcer. We'll just say he's he's a He's a comedic piece of the show. He does the introduction. He does trivia in the middle, and then he'll do the credits at the end. Right. But he also gave me these really great samples. He, he kind of brags about himself in very short little vignettes. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. Nice. But sometimes they don't always line up perfectly. They don't sound exactly the same. Mm. And so if I increase the bass or decrease the treble or something, it's it sounds more like the previous you know i just cut these pieces together to make new sentences i see so you have to basically match the tone so when you when you hit the yeah. letter b it does it bring up the effect and then you adjust the effect yeah 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 okay yeah and it's pretty quick and easy nice yeah and then i've got a couple other ones like uh save and export those are the f keys um those are those are majority of the the keyboard shortcuts that i use right so i just went through like the qwerty keyboard on the left uh, left hand side nice one that i use in reaper is uh fade out from the cursor so wherever my cursor is and a, and i have to have a, a clip selected too but wherever my cursor is if i hit the key i forget which it is actually i use four and six so six is fade out from the cursor and four is fade in to the yeah. cursor <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, so when I, like, so what I do, actually, when I, um, you know, we're talking about people making noise, but like, when they're not speaking, they're either breathing loud or making noise, and, like, let's say if they, they're making a lot of noise that you literally need to cut it out. So let's say the person stops talking. Let's say the host stops talking, and their guest starts talking, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say 10 seconds in to the guest talking, the host you know, clanks something or, you know, is eating cereal and, and cutting a steak <laughs> with a fork and knife on a plate and all that. And so you can actually cut right there. But so for the 10 seconds that the, so, so the first 10 seconds that the guest is talking, the host's audio is still there in the background. What I'll do is I'll fade out that 10 seconds. I'll start from when the guest started yeah. talking. So it's a slow fade over 10 yeah. seconds in the background. And so when it finally goes away, it's just it's just more of a gentle fade, so you don't immediately, yeah, it it's not that abrupt. So I like right. gentle yeah. things, gentle transitions because it's less noticeable. Exactly, you ease the listener's ear into that new environment. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, this has been awesome, Steve. I think this we got to t go really into editing. It's been it's been great. Thanks yeah. for coming on the show, man. Hey, you're welcome. I'll tell you what, I'm going to send you a list of those keyboard shortcuts and you can put them in your show notes for everybody to see. Oh, that's awesome. Perfect. So Steve Stewart Podcast Productions, that's your company. You do editing for lots of folks. If uh, you're listening to this, join the Podcast Editors Club on Facebook. I'll have a link to it in the show notes. And if you're in St. Louis, go to the meetup with Steve. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and if please. you're if you want some training on audacity again steve stewart dot me i'll link to that in the show notes steve thanks again man chris appreciate you can't wait to see you i know well well we already saw each other no wait we're recording before but it's publishing after podcast movement this is weird i swear we've met in the past but this is going to be more meaningful now that we've had a podcast together We'll always have a podcast, Chris. That's right. Thanks again, Steve. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out all the previous episodes, podcastengineeringschool.com. Until next time, you know what to say, Steve. Do you? Sound great? I'll say it. Sound great! Sound great!
Your theory 